everyone. I'm Remy. I'm one of the bids maintainer. Bids as the brain, as in brain imaging data structure. And today I'm here with uh, Kirsty and Franklin to talk about the bids steering group. Uh, and first, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. So, Kirsty, you want to go first? Sure. Thank you so much, Remy. Thank you for bringing us together. I'm Kirsty Whitaker. I'm the director of the Tools, Practices, and Systems Research Program at the Alan Turing Institute, which is the UK's National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. And I got into this role uh, because my PhD and my postdoc were in brain imaging, and I cared an awful lot about um, inefficiencies in imaging and a lack of reproducibility in brain imaging. And so you can probably see how that would then lead me to be part of uh, BIDS community and I ended up on the steering group. So I'm super excited to talk about that today. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Franklin, your turn. Well, hey, everyone. Thank you, Remy. So I, I'm also a, a BIDS maintainer and uh, I work in, in Russ Paul Direct's group and the Center for Reproducible Neuroscience as an associate director of strategy and operations. And, and so I primarily focus on uh, just really managing and administrating all the different aspects of, of bids and, and keeping our different steering group and bids maintainers groups together, coordinated, all moving forward and aligned uh, and keeping the balls rolling. Yeah, I, I can I can attest that Franklin might not be the most visible on some of the mailing list or on the like GitHub repository, but he's doing crazy amount of work in the background, and none of this would be happening if he weren't there. Okay, um, okay, so let's just jump right into it. So for a lot of people, bids is just you know how you organize your data, right? But so they don't necessarily realize this the whole first ecosystem but there's a whole like structure behind it of how to just run that thing and there's the bid steering group so what is the bid steering group and what is its role um kirsty as a member do you want to sort of like give us an idea of what 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 the role of the bid steering group is yeah let's let's model what the bid steering group looks like where i'll speak for a bit and then franklin will have like the actual details and the correct information and sort of fill it all in for us uh so BID started um, as a sort of brainchild and a, a huge, huge piece of work from Frisco Westy. And, um, and for a certain amount of time, BIDS was able to grow with sort of his unbelievable effort pushing it forwards. And it was always a community. And one of the things that he did right from the very beginning was try to empower people to, to participate, to be part of those conversations. Because we know that a standard that isn't used is just N plus one standards. It's no use at all. And so making sure that people had had bought in the kind of literally how to name your files. I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than how to name your files, but it is not that much more complicated than just naming your files and putting them in a particular place. Um, but, oh, wow, the opinions, the opinions that people have about their file names. Um, and so it was it was a huge amount of work and Chris really pushed it forward and he he brought people along, brought people like me along. I used to um sort of see him at lots of uh at lots of in-person hackathons and at various different events, and we'd always get like really deep into into sort of for me, it was very much around community theory about how do you bring people together, how do you get them to adopt. And um, at some point, he decided to go and work at, uh, at Google, and he's doing really, really interesting work at Google now, looking at, um, at sort of data, data management, data sharing more, more broadly, and at probably an even greater scale than brain imaging. And as always is the case, when one person leaves, one person who's been doing that much work, you usually replace them with two people if it's a full-time job. And in our case, because we were going to be volunteers working, leading on the, the steering committee, he was replaced by five people, which is, I think, probably a totally appropriate sort of percentage of, um, of person power to, to step in. And so we are, um, we are a group of five people. We were elected um, as a group. So one of the things that we, we sort of looked for when we built up the governance for introducing the steering group is thinking about making sure that it's a diverse group and it's a group of people who can cover quite a lot of the different disciplines and areas that bids are trying to, to serve. Um, and we meet every three weeks. And I will stop talking now because I'm sure we're going to dig into a lot more detail 
But basically, we kind of look out for the sort of medium and long term future of bids. So we're trying to kind of keep an eye on the landscape. We are in very close con- contact with the maintainers, who are really the people who do the vast amount of work, as well as obviously the main, the, the people in the community who are developing and using and training people to use bids. But we we try to sort of steer the ship. We try to just sort of make sure that the the whole sort of endeavor is following um, its needs and and laying out some road ahead of it. Franklin, what's your perspective? Yeah, no, yeah, def- definitely. Thank, thank you so so much. That that really, I think, really encapsulates it very well, um, particularly around the context of how the steering group really originated, and what what I think I view and and how I view and really utilize and leverage the steering group as well. So my my type of role is I I try to think about those things as well, and really strategically from where bids is going, just always trying to look around the corner. And one of the most important pieces of bids, in my opinion, is all these extension proposals. Like that's where we're going to be going. That's what's going to be coming coming into the standard. That's what's going to be later on being incorporated and then later used by the community. And so one of so one of my primary pieces that I do is is a lot of these extension proposals updates that I do on a biannual basis, and really just just ask the the the, the Beth leads how they're doing, just to keep our our whole very large broad ecosystem under the universe of bids. A little bit closer together, and 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 then one of the things that I do is if if I gauge and see that a, a Beth is really starting to near completion or getting a little stuck, then that's a really perfect time to bring them into a steering group meeting. Just have them present their ideas to the steering group and really have some really beautiful conversations. Like there there have been some really great conversations between the steering group and different extension proposal leads that then they're able to take that back into the group and really incorporate a lot of this really great feedback. And and really regarding this group, that's like a really that's a really important special group to have. And like as Christy mentioned, that that diversity of experience, ca- career placement, trajectories, it's really important to to those conversations because we just get such a different perspective that one question could be viewed five different ways, and that I think really helps push push the the, the different extension proposals along and ultimately bids along as a whole. We have kind of a fun um, dynamic, particularly because we've been doing these meetings on Zoom, obviously. Um, we're recording this in September of 2021. We've been doing a lot of Zoom for a long time, but but even before, you know, we needed to meet on Zoom because uh, Franklin and Russ are in um, are in California, and I think the rest of us are in are in Europe in various different countries. Um, and so when we when we sort of invite the BEP leads to come along it can sometimes feel a little bit like they've been sort of brought in front of the headmaster or they're they're in front of like an, an interview panel. And so um, we try very hard to make it very clear that we are, we are always so excited to learn from them. Um, I'm going to forget the number, Franklin, you might remember, but there's a, there's an extension that's looking at um, bringing bed, bed, I'm sorry, bids into, into animal imaging and into histology imaging. And I, I just must have had like, I just had such a fun hour learning from them, thinking about it, getting really tickled by the idea that we were going to have to add a metadata tag for species. Like in all of my research and all of my motivations to coming into bids, I hadn't thought that of all the things you needed to track in your data set, you also needed to capture the species um, for these little adolescent humans for the data that I that I worked with who were coming in and lying in MRI scanners. So we we have them come along and they they sort of present where they're up to. And we try very hard to make it very clear that we're, we're here to support, we're here to, to listen. Um, but what we can usually do is we can usually see commonalities. So one of the things that we're often looking out for are um, when people are introducing new concepts that actually probably could be a concept that's already in the standard. So you don't introduce something new. We could, and, and they they may not know if they're leading a bids extension, they may not know that there's another extension that's doing something similar. So that's another thing that you know Franklin does on a, on a more sort of day-to-day or week-by-week basis. But that's something that we try and look out for and we try and have that sort of um knowledge of the ecosystem to think about um to think about kind of heading off potential complexities that might be introduced at some point. 
And then we've also, all of us on the steering committee have contributed to bids in various different ways. And we know that it can be hard. I mean, I made this joke earlier about um, just just how surprisingly opinionated people are about like the names for their files, but whoa, they're so, they're so opinionated. And so we can, a lot of times what we do is we reassure um, BEP leads and say, look, you can just make this decision. Like at some point you've, you've done enough. You've, you've spoken to enough members of the communities. You you've connected with bids. You've also connected with the user community. Um, so Melanie Gatz, who I, who did an awful lot of work on the, the PET, the Positron Emission Tomography Extension, you know, it's really important that the, that the PET uh, community understand what's needed from bids. And we, we can sort of help to navigate sometimes when there is um, a possible kind of convergence, but no, uh, no specific answer. Um, and one of the pieces of advice that we often give is to say, just pick one. You're never going to hit everyone being um, totally happy all the time. And one of our foundational principles is to follow the Pareto principle. So you're staying for sort of 80% um, and, and not get too bogged down in some of the, the most sort of specific details. I, I like, I, I think I'm just going to add one thing from the maintainer's perspective about uh, what the bid steering, like um, the advantage of the bid steering committee is that as a maintainer, sometimes you get really deep down in the trenches and you end up having this very tunnel vision of the little problem that you, you, you're facing, you're trying to fix this or trying to make sure that things are sort of compatible between them. And having the, the steering committee and a bunch of people who are you know, trying to keep the big picture in mind is really helpful because he tends to like go against his like tunnel vision tendency that we might have as maintainers because of what we do. So it's really reassuring to actually knowing that you have a group of people who just whose job is pretty much like, yeah, the big picture is like what we have to also look out for. And it's super, super useful. And it's really uh, and also when you join as a maintainer, it's just like, oh, I'm not alone, but it's also not alone as a maintainer, but it's also just a whole group of people who are just make sure that the ship is generally going in the right direction. So that's just feels, um, it feels like makes the environment a lot more safer in general to sort of, okay, I'm able to work and I'm not going to completely mess things up. So it's, it's really great to have that uh, as part of the, the sort of the whole infrastructure and not infrastructure, but the whole like community of the bids uh, world. Um, okay, and another reason why I think where we want to talk about the bid steering committee is that we have a steering group is that we have elections coming up. Uh, yay! Um, because unfortunately, uh, or well, as part of the bid steering group, it, there is a turnover and some members leave and some new members come aboard. And uh, Kirsty will be leaving uh, on this turn. Uh, and so we need to have elections to elect someone else. So um, I'm also here with you to talk about how that's going to happen and what's, what we have in store and how it's, that's going to gonna develop. So Franklin, you want to tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, yeah. So the, these uh, elections will be now coming up every, every single year. So there'll be a, every year there'll be a new opportunity to be able to, to join the uh, steering group. And so the the actual election process will stay pretty standard uh, over the course of, of every single year, pending different iterations that we find over the of, over the course of actually running these different elections. Um, but the typical process will be what well, we will have an a open nomination period that that folks in the community can actually submit their name and throw throw their name into the hat to to, to try to actually join the uh, steering group and uh, that so that 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 nom nomination period will be open for about three three weeks and we'll be sending out quite a bit of reminders out to the community to try to collect information and uh, the the actual process for nominating yourself is just submitting your name your email and giving us just a, a really kind of brief description of what you would add to the to the steering group um, and we want that to be very broadly broadly defined to just get, kind of give you the space to to share with the community what what again you would you would really contribute to to this really nice beautiful group of the steering group um, and then 
then we're actually running the election so that the election will probably stay open for roughly about three weeks. And our voting body is made up of all of our contributors as based in the appendix section of the specification. And then we tally up the results and, and, share, and share with the community who our new steering group member is um, and really start getting them onboarded in, into the group. Um, and that's really kind of at a very high level the, the process for how we actually go about um, electing a new steering group member. Okay, uh, so I think you mentioned you, so pretty much who can apply to be part of the bid steering group? Like who, um, who would like the, you know, what would be the profile of a candidate who would apply? Yeah, so, uh, oh yeah, so Chris, if you want to take, take that one, I think it'd be. You go, you go first. You do the. You, I'll, I'll sort of. Um, I want to give like a, a more kind of personal pitch for who, who can replace. Who can replace me? I mean, who can really? Everyone. But you do the. You do the straight. You do the straight answer. Yeah. Cool. So, so I think a very I ideal candidate is one. I, I don't want to pigeonhole them in, into any type of particular job title or career rank or where they're at in their their career, but just someone that will really be able to to give us a continue to add on to the diversity of, of the per perspective and experience on that steering group because because as we kind of mentioned earlier in this conversation how really important the steering group and the role that the steering group gives to to bids as, as a whole really su supporting in some of the op some of the day-to-day -day operations that all the, the bids maintainers do and and to be like be ready for these middle and long-term really vision setting of bids, like where are we going in the next six months, next year, next two years? Um, these could be very challenging questions to really try to grapple with. And so just being being ready to have have this conversation with all your, your fellow steering group members, being able to uh, be prepared to kind of share share your opinions in this in this space. Um, and again, I don't want to pigeonhole any any type of particular job title, rank, um, even what, what modality, but just really tapping into the 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 diversity is that I think is what has helped bids get to this point, and what will 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 continue to help bids grow and and really bloom into into this nice beautiful standard that we all really want and vision it out to be. I love I love that I just completely completely agree um, with Franklin and and I think it's really important to not so. Mo some of the people on the um, on the steering committee right now, steering group right now, are professors, um, but but some are not, and I I think it's it's that diversity inside of the group, which is why we have this. Maybe slightly, it might feel a little complex the structure of sort of having people rotate off as you go. But just to sort of dig in, the reason that we have that rotating off. Is so that we don't sort of lose momentum when a new a whole new group comes in. We wanted to sort of maintain that continuity because the responsibility is to is to keep that sort of laying out that road ahead of um, the bids community. And we have so so I just um, I just want to sort of name my my uh, lovely members of the of the steering group, this inaugural steering group. Um, so Guillaume Aniso is our is our chair. Um, and she's a MEG, but I think she does quite a lot of sort of brain imaging more broadly now. Um, Melanie Gans is uh, does a lot of PET imaging, but also has some has some work with MRI to sort of match up, obviously with the with the PET work. Um, Robert Ustenwald is a pretty hardcore sort of EEG MEG sort of person, and then Russ Poldrak um, is a sort of fMRI structural MRI, and obviously has been sort of part of thinking about the BIDS um, uh, project from the from the beginning and leads on uh, open neuro as well. So thinking about kind of how we archive that archive that data. And so then what where where my expertise lie, I, there's sort of two branches through which I've been contributing into BIDS. One is uh, BEPO01, which has been led by um, Hilles and Aga. Uh, and we have a we have a paper that um, might be going out, and is all the the, the changes for to make bids that uh, work for quantitative MRI have been it's BEPO one. It's the very first extension, and it's it was merged um, quite recently, and so that's a huge, a huge success. So I've I've got some experience with the, with sort of trying to extend the the um, the standard, 
But really my expertise and my sort of great passions are around community engagement. So I also was part of setting up the um, the Bid Starter Kit. And I'm very, very keen on thinking about kind of why people don't participate in bids or why people don't use bids and what do they what do they need in order to feel that this is a community that is um that is for them and that wants to hear their their interests, their challenges, their concerns, and their ideas. And so I just want to sort of finish by saying. I think the best person to come in and and replace me is really someone that feels that way. And I don't think it matters what stage anyone's at for that. And I don't think it matters really what modality um, you're using. I think what matters is it's going to be someone who's going to come in and sort of say, how do we continue to bring bring users to make sure that bids is used? And how do we think about sort of supporting those users to become contributors into the bids community and then maybe even how do they become maintainers of the bids community so i would say you don't have to you you should know something about bids you should know something about why people use it and i would encourage you to think about why people don't use bids um you don't have to have been a maintainer just yet you think you can still apply to to join the steering group um but i also if you if you think that being a maintainer might be quite interesting, I would encourage you to have a think about that as well. Yep, I'm totally in favor of this for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, before we completely wrap up, um, do we have any sort of dates and deadline for those coming elections? Yes. Yeah, so, we, so we, so our our election is coming up uh, in in this kind of 2021 cycle. So our, our date, so the uh, open nomination period is going to be happening dur- over the course of uh, the week of September 13th. So some so sometime during that week, there'll be announcements coming out. So please look out for that or if it's already happened to 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 look out on our mailing list uh, to tap into that. So then in these in this uh, open nomination period announcement, there'll be a link to the Google form to be able to fill that out. And then this is going to stay open until October 1st. We're going to, then on the back end, we'll be collecting a lot of the materials. And then if, if you're a contributor, you'll be receiving an email from us to be able to actually fill out your ballot to, to vote for the next steering group member. So that'll be happening throughout the month of October. So from October 11th to 29th, then uh, again, the, the uh, bids team is going to come together, tally, tally, tally it up, and then we'll be ready to make that announcement around uh, November 9th to be able to share with, with the community who indeed is going to be our new steering group member. And they'll serve, they'll serve on the steering group for three years. Is that right, Franklin? Yes, yes. The, this will be a, yes, a, a three, should be yeah, about a three year position. Yep. Correct. And then, and then you'll again be, be rotated out just to, just as you are going to be ta- taking, taking the place of Christy. Yep. So we'll have, there'll be elections every year. And we'll rotate out. I think the goal is to rotate out two people every year, right? And so it's just this first time around because there's five. We're just rotating out one person, and then we'll start to start to keep keep maintaining a little bit of stability and a little bit of fresh blood um, every year. Yeah, I think it'll be like a two-two-one cycle, just to kind of because there is five five folks. Okay. So I think that pretty much sums it up. So unless any of you has any final words? Nope. Okay, then we're going to wrap it up and say bye to everyone. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you, Kersey, for joining me. And I'll see you all on another of those um, episodes. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.